Hi, this is Sean and Ashlyn with the first of two parts that are going to explain how to lay out your documents, how to create section viewports, and, and basically make your workflow much more easy to handle. It's Together, these two are going to be a little bit longer, even for me, than a normal tutorial, uh, probably about a half an hour. But if you watch them both, that'll be a half an hour that will save you conceivably hundreds of hours in the future uh, and, and keep you a lot more sane. Because when you're creating a document in Vectorworks, if you're just doing a simple document, you just, just need to draw something really quick and simple and it's going to be just one image, you can just draw right on a design layer. I frequently use design layers and then print from a design layer uh, now for things like ground plans. That's really easy to do. If your drawing is really simple uh, and there's not much going on, there's no reason to just not continue to use design layers. However, if uh, you end up drawing complicated documents with lots of things going on, it can get very confusing very quickly. And there are some more sophisticated tools that have appeared in the last few versions of Vectorworks, things like sheet layers and viewports, that are a little hard to get a hang of, but once you do, it's going to save you a ton of time. I'm a set designer, so I'm looking at, um, I'm showing you an example of a, a, a unit from a, a show that I'm designing right now that has multiple scenes in it. Uh, but the same kind of things can apply to other things, even if, if you if you don't uh, don't work in theater. Um, here is a sheet layer of one of the units, this little unit here in an isometric view um, that's that's used early on in this show, um, and this is generated through a sheet layer and viewports. And I'll show you how to do that in the second tutorial. But before I do that, this one I just want to show you how I lay out the the documents. Um, so if I pop back over here to our our layers menu here, um, I'll show you first of all basically this. This, here's my, um, I'll jump over to scene three. Um, so this show has multiple scenes in it. So the way that I lay the document out is here is my theater and some, some of my set on stage um, all laid out and ready to go. But one of the things that I do is I automatically start by putting the theater architecture here. Here's the 3D theater on its own layer for a variety of reasons. And if I have a show that has only a, you know, it's a unit set and only has one scene, I'll create another layer for the 3D set. And that's just fine. I can just draw straight on that layer and, and I don't need to worry about it. But I have multiple scenes in this show with different things on stage. So what I have done then is generated multiple, you know, scene three that we're in right now and a few other scenes um, that I'm able to toggle them on and off by changing the visibility from invisible to visible and back and forth again, or to gray if you want to use the third column, um, I can make a scene shift. Like, for example, I could go from scene five to scene four by doing that. And then when I go back to uh, my view, I will have everything everything that I've set up for scene four on stage all ready to go. Would it be nice if our scene shifts actually went that fast? Um, so that's a really important thing to do is to consider using design layers and classes to organize uh, what you want to be showing at any, any given time. I even have this hide layer that I create both in classes and design layers that I just use as a kind of a, a drawer to put things in. If something's in my way and I'm drawing and like, ah, oh, gosh, this borders in the way I wish I could just, I just snap on something and I move it quickly to the hide layer. Um, that way I get out of my way, but I don't have to move it and have to get it back in the right position again. It's just a great way to kind of drop things for a bit. However, you can also use a combination of both of these. For example, I have my 3D layer on here. So if I go back over to my view here, there's my 3D layer, but I have my seats turned off. So if I go back to classes, I have my theater seats in their own class layer. These theater seats are on the 3D theater design layer, but they're in their own class. So I can and toggle them on and off separately. So this is an actual 3D representation of the seats in my theater. So that's handy. I mean, I might want to be able to, to drop a camera, as I frequently do, in a particular seat to check my sight lines. You know, there's lots of reasons why I might want um, to do that. Let me switch over here to show uh, uh, all the layers. Um, so here's my, my theater set um, with the seats in it. But if I jump over here to front view, I've got a problem. My theater seats are in the way of all of my scenery. So to fix that problem, I can, I mean, I usually have these guys turned off and turn them on only when I get ready to render. And I'll turn off those theater seats and get them out of my way. And then there's, I've got a clear shot of the stage. I also have like, for example, I have my image props here. These are my little figures that are standing in as my actors here. Usually I don't want those in the, the view. Um, so I'll come back in and 
turn them off. They're on their own layer figures. I can turn them off. I've got furniture. I've got all kinds of different things on different layers. And you can just clear the way. Um, so like, there we go. All my all my actors have left the stage now. Let me just show you the renderings of what I'm doing. Basically, I'm, I'm, I'm creating views like this for the director and the show and tell for the actors and everybody. A lot of people want to see, well, what is the set going to look like? So here's a view of that first scene that has this little fairy godmother wagon unit on it, um, rendered out photorealistically, and it looks looks lovely, and I have my little stand-in actors and all the props and the lighting and things. A lot of people want to see this. The director, for example, you know, wants to, to prove that, oh, is that what it's going to look like? Great. That's terrific. Um, I've got other views. Here's other moments. These are all scenes from the, oh, there's a zoom into that. These are all scenes from the same play, just different parts of the scenery uh, moving around into different positions. However, this is lovely for a lot of people that want to see what it's going to look like on stage, but that's not what my carpenters who are going to build it want to see. They're going to want to see something like this, uh, the sheet layer here with the drafting on it. This is what, what they need to build the set from. So there's a couple of different things that we can do to create this. So basically, I've got my design layers set out this way, um, and I will use for something like an elevation, I will use viewports and sheet layers that I'll go into in great detail in the second um, half of this tutorial. But I do want to show you, I still use uh, the 2D version. How you convert 2D to 3D, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So here what I've done is I have a two-dimensional uh, uh, design layer of the ground plan for scene three, for example, here. And I have them I have both things turned on at the same time here. So I have my 3D model showing underneath my uh, my other layer. So if I go over here, let me snap over here so you can see what I'm doing, to my layer options and say active only, that's just the 2D ground plan of it. And I tend to still draw ground plans sort of the old school way by just tracing over the model. Basically, the way the, the, the program has evolved is uh, when I first started using Vectorworks, we didn't have sheet layers. Uh, so you drew everything on a design layer. And if you, you usually started with 2D, and then if you wanted to create a model, you would extrude the two-dimensional shapes into three-dimensional shapes to create a model to show people. It's changed a lot. A lot of people are working this way now, including myself, is I don't draw 2D first. I might I might sketch out a ground plan to get a sense of my geography first, but then what I start doing right away is designing the 3D model first, and then I convert the 3D model into 2D drawings, and I'll show you how to do that. The one exception is I trace over, I'll go ahead and set both views. I'll keep my clicking too low there. Um, layer options, maybe uh, a gray snap out is a great way to do this here. So you can see underneath here, that grayed out view, there. That's the things that are in my 3D model, just shown in top plan view. Don't forget you might need to, to use the unified layer button here to get them to line up right. Um, if that button's on, then you're in good shape. And then I can just use my two-dimensional tools to just trace over this version, just like just like putting a sheet of vellum over an, an, another layer and tracing over it um, to create a, uh, a ground plan. The reason why I do that is, a, is that really a ground plan is a horizontal section cut. Horizontal section cuts, uh, Vectorworks doesn't like those. Um, so it's just easier to to trace over it for a ground plan. But pretty much everything else that I do, I will use by referencing the model. And how I go about doing that, that's really what the other um, uh, tutorial is going to be about. But let me go over and show you layer zero here where I've just taken, this is the, the fairy godmother shop here, um, the, that one unit all by itself on its own little layer uh, to reference. Now what you can do, there's a variety of ways to do this. I can jump over here to OpenGL. Oh, by the way, I've, I've stripped all of the, the rendered textures out of it here. So I have basically a white model of it. That way it doesn't, I don't get textures showing up in my, uh, in my drafting, um, which probably wouldn't hurt anything, but it's not not quite professional looking. So I'll take all the textures out of it, and 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 I've got a white model to reference. Now, one of the things that you could do, there's a couple of different ways that you can convert the 2D to 3D. I could just switch over here to a front view, go ahead and grab everything on this layer, and come over here to uh, to modify and convert to uh, to polygons or to lines or something like that. And what that would do is it would take the 3D model and kind of flatten it out into lines. There's a catch with that. The problem is, is that when I went to create this little chain link, for example, here, this little chain link was created by drawing an oval and then drawing a circle and uh, uh, sweeping along that profile. It's a, 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 a extrude along a path uh, command here. So I take that circle and I extrude it around that, and I've got two very simple shapes. And in 2D, this is just an oval. So oval, one object, one equation, it's very easy to draw for, for Vectorworks to put it on the screen. So I'm going to get the, those out of the way. Except when I take my little rendered 
chain link here. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm talking about. And if I tell uh, Vectorworks to take this, take a picture basically of this 3D thing. It's gonna, it's not gonna draw an oval here. It's gonna draw this little line segment and this little line segment and this little line segment and probably some segments going this way and maybe even a couple, you know. So this one chain, this one link of chain that you could draw with two ovals if you were drawing it from scratch just in 2D or as a three dimensional shape in 3D. Um, would end up being like 120 lines. I mean, you have a t just for one link times however many chain links I have times every other curve thing in this, you'd end up with a whole lot of lines. Just to see, I went ahead and converted this. I did that for, for just this view, just to get a front elevation view of this little shop here. It ended up being 33,000 objects, polygons and lines, just to draw this, which means that it's a very sluggish drawing. I mean, you're just, to, just to pan across the screen, just to, you know, to, to click and just do that, it's got to stop and redraw everything, you know, 33,000 uh, shapes over and over again. So you can convert something this way by doing that. It's a little clumsy um, to do that. The better way is to take this layer zero here and then reference it uh, on sheet layers, uh, which I'll get into in the next tutorial. So it's really, watch this next one because it's going to save you a ton of time.